Morning Brewers, it's brew day. The uh, grandfather is singing away behind me. I hope it doesn't mess up the sound. Brewer Rye IPA today using Benny Con's Shy IPA recipe. It's quite a strong beer over 8%. So I am brewing a small volume. I'm only brewing 10 litres. I don't really want. 20 plus litres of nearly 9% beer. Uh, now my experience is that small volume high gravity beers you can get really can really hit your uh, efficiency. I think part because of the way the sparge calculation works in uh, in grandfather. So um, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to talk about um, efficiency and hitting your numbers. So I'm going to get this mashed in, then uh, I'll talk to you a bit about efficiency and what it means to me and then at each stage of the brew I'll pause and I'll just talk about what I think we can do to help at each stage to make sure we hit our numbers and uh, get the efficiency that, we're, that we need. Okay, so I'll get this all mashed in and then uh, I'll be back shortly. Alright, the, uh, the mash is in, it's, it's running nicely there, so um, let's talk about efficiency and hitting your numbers. So first of all, what do we mean by efficiency? So we're all talking about the same thing. So efficiency re refers to the extent to which you get as much sugar out of your ingredients as, in theory, you should be able to get. So every uh, ingredient that we use, the theoretical maximum yield of that ingredient has been calculated. You can find them in books like John Palmer's book, Lists of, of Yield. But the easiest thing to do is to put your recipe into a beer smith or something like it and it will calculate your expected yield for you based on the ingredients that you've used. Uh, and typically we talk about two types of efficiency, ma mash efficiency and brew house efficiency. So with mash efficiency is just looking at the efficiency of the mash. So if you measure your wort immediately after the mash uh, when it's in the, just landed in the boiler uh, and you compare that to the yield that you should get in theory. Now the 100% um, mash figure, uh, efficiency figure, is based on laboratory conditions and whilst I've seen some brewers claiming that they get 100% or higher, uh, higher than laboratory conditions, I'm, I'm sceptical really of their, of their maths. Most of us would get 80-90% uh, mash efficiency. But from now on, I'm going to be talking about uh, brew house efficiency because you know that's what I'm interested in. What what specific gravity do I get in the fermenter, and is that uh, what I expected to get? Okay, so uh, what efficiency do I get? Well, I keep comprehensive records when I'm brewing, uh, and this is a plot of the efficiency that I get. So I've got I can put a picture of this on the. Uh, uh, a JPEG of this in the video so you can see it more clearly, but I've got the grain bill along the bottom, the efficiency, brew house efficiency that I get over the side there. And the numbers on here is the brew uh, number, so the higher the number, the more recently I've done it, so the more experienced I was. And the general trend is that uh, as my grain bill goes up, my efficiency comes down. These two are odd brews, I knew, I know what was going on with these, it's a very small grain bill. Uh, I didn't have the micro pipe work and um, I think that really hits your efficiency circles in my experience. Uh, this one was a new ingredient, I just overestimated the yield I was going to get from that ingredient but you can see the general trend here. And also the general trend is in a column, you know, the same grain bill, the higher number of brews are higher and that just means I'm getting more experienced with my uh, brew house efficiency and uh, getting better yield as I get on. So why does this happen? As you can see uh, there seems to be a sweet spot, I've often said this in comments, for grandfather brewing between 4 and 5 kilogram. Uh, I'm up here at, you know, now fairly consistently 85% uh, uh, brew house efficiency overall. And as the grain bill increases, then uh, that decreases. Now, uh, in a way that's logical because if your specific gravity is really high, then every error that you make in your brew house efficiency is going to hit your efficiency more. So if you leave 500 mil more of, a, of an 80 degree specific gravity wart in your boiler, that's going to hit your efficiency a lot more than if you do that with a 40 
you know, specific gravity beer. So it is harder to keep your efficiency up unless you're really on top of your process as you get further into uh, into the higher higher grain bills. There's another effect as well, and that is the effect of the um, calculation that Grainfather does around mash and sparge volume. So I've got another chart that I'm going to show you just to illustrate what happens as you get into higher grain bills. This is a plot of the water volumes that are going on in your Grainfather brew. So we've got a grain bill going up here and the water volume here. Uh, and you can see the mash volume goes up as the grain bill goes up. We've got 9 kilos here as you'd expect because the grain father is working to within three constraints really. One, what final volume do you want in your brew? Two, how much water is needed to get the right consistency for the mash? That's got to be uh, figured in. And three, how much water is going to be absorbed by the grain? This line here is the total amount of water that you'll be using in your brew, and as you can see, even though we're ending up with the same volume, this is based on 23 litre brews, the volume of water that you use goes up, and that's reflecting the higher grain bill and the amount of water that will be left behind in the grain, so you need slightly more with higher grain bills. But the important thing is the blue one. The blue line is the sparge water, because if you've got a fixed end point of 23 litres, you've got to use a certain amount of water to get the right consistency, then as the grain bill goes up, the amount of sparge water you're going to use goes down. And so it's counterintuitive. The higher the big 9 kilogram grain bill is going to be using less sparge water than a 3 kilogram grain bill. Yeah? And that's one reason I think that you get less brew house efficiency, uh, or mash efficiency even overall, if you with your higher grain bill um, mashes if you use the grain feather formula. Interestingly, the point at which these cross, mash water, sparge water, is just over four and a half kilos. So you know I said the sweet spot seems to be four to five kilos. Once you get over 4.6 kilos, something like that, the amount of mash, uh, sparge water is being sacrificed by the amount of um, mash water that you need to get the right consistency for the higher grain bill. And that's one reason why, I think, we see different efficiencies with higher grain bills and I'll talk a little bit later as we get into the brewing process about what some, some of your options about what to do about that. Now un understanding the way that the grandfather formula is working and what it's doing will help you make an insightful adjustments to your brewing and help you get better efficiency but also hit, help you hit your numbers. So the important thing is that the grandfather is basically Starting with a constraint of your final volume, adding a certain amount of water to get the right mash consistency, allowing, making an allowance which is the 0.8 in the formula, at 800 mil per kilogram, making an allowance for the water that stays in the grain, and then what's left over basically is the sparge amount that you get to use. So the sparge volume that the grain filer calculates is a compromise, it's not really the amount of water that ideally you would use necessarily to get the best extraction from your mash. So I know what efficiencies I tend to get. Now when I'm brewing I tend to look back at a similar recipe, see what efficiency I got and I refer to my data. And then I can, uh, those of you that use Beersmith or similar software, you can adjust the efficiency up for the recipe and get your recipe adjusted for your efficiency. So I'm typically working at 80 to 85 percent efficiency on most of my brews because I brew at four to five kilograms each time. Now. Uh, do I care what my efficiency is? Answer, yes and no. Um, I don't really care whether my efficiency, to be honest, is 80% or 90% for most brews. You know, why don't I care? Well, the amount of permol that I need for a 1050 brew at 80% efficiency is 4.8 kilograms. The amount of permalt that I need for a 1050 brew at 90% efficiency is 4.3 kilograms. So the difference is half a kilogram of, of permalt, which at the prices I can buy it at is 34 pence. You know, am I going to fret over having to put 34 pence worth of pale malt in my mash because I've got an 80% efficiency rather than 90% efficiency? Frankly, no. Uh, I suspect that the, the crush that I get on my malt is quite coarse 
uh, because I get really fast sparge and that and almost certainly the way to get my efficiency up to, into the 90s will be to crush finer. But you know the brewery, you get man malt from a brewery, they crush it the way they crush it for themselves, they're not going to change the crush just for me. I don't really want to spend 50, 60, 70 pounds on a mill, crush my own grain, you know, all for the sake of 34 pence of brew. So I'm happy with my efficiency, so if I don't care about efficiency, why make a video about it? Answer, because I do care about hitting my numbers. And if you want to hit your numbers and get the, the beer that you expected at the end of the recipe, then you need to know what your efficiency is going to be. So I care more about knowing what my efficiency is than getting it up you know, as high as possible, provided it's in a sensible range, and I think 80 to 85%. I'm happy with that overall brew house efficiency, you know. I'm happy with that. So, um, so that's an introduction then to efficiency. I'm actually really interested in efficiency in the context of hitting my numbers. So let's get on with the brew. And at each stage of the brew, I'll give you my views on what we need to be doing to help us, you know, get the, a reasonable efficiency in our brew house efficiency, but also make sure that as far as possible, uh, we hit our numbers. Okay, so I'm going to uh, let the mash finish and uh, we'll uh, talk about mashing in a, in a minute and things that affect efficiency during the mash stage.